Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 10 of the chapter Chemical Bonding and Molecular Structure. We have been discussing bond parameters and we have reached the last bond parameter in the previous few videos. The bond parameters that I explained to you were bond length, bond angle, bond enthalpy, bond order, resonance structures and we were discussing the polarity of bonds. I was telling you about the ionic character of covalent bonds and I told you about molecules that were homonuclear diatomic molecules that is molecules of the same element and just two atoms and then we talked of heteronuclear molecules that is molecules where the atoms were of different elements diatomic, triatomic, tetraatomic so now di diatomic that is AB type the AB2 type that is the triatomic and in this video we are going to start discussing the AB3 type of polyatomic heteronuclear molecules. The AB3 means that one element is there's one atom of one element and three atoms of another element. An example here is BF3. So let us see look at BF3 and notice what its structure is like and what its net dipole moment should be. We know that fluorine is more electronegative than boron. Therefore, the dipole moment for the bonds, that is the bond dipoles, should direct towards fluorine. And we notice that in the second arrow, that the dipole moment is towards fluorine, towards fluorine and towards fluorine. We find that the that the dipole moment of this molecule, the net dipole moment of this molecule is zero. And how do we reason that knowing that fluorine is electronegative and there is a dipole moment for every bond, yet why is the molecule on the whole nonpolar? The reason can be explained with the help of its structure. If you notice, here the three fluorines, boron occupies the center and the three fluorines occupy the three corners of a regular triangle in a planar structure. So it is like uh, an isosceles or an equilateral triangle and if you imagine these three pencils you could imagine these three fluorines to be somewhat like this you know. Do you see? They are occupying the three corners of a regular triangle. And if I make the bonds, that is, if I see it from boron, you will notice that this, this is boron in the center and these are the three bonds occupying the three corners of a regular triangle. Each angle here, the central angle, is 120 degrees. So what happens as a result of such a structure? This fluorine is pulling the electrons towards itself in that direction. But these two fluorines are pulling the electrons in these two directions. And what happens? What is the result of these two directions? Since dipole moment is a vector quantity, the direction in which it acts also it um, if also affects the uh, net dipole moment. How does it affect it here? Imagine that I'm pulling something from front. If there's a rope that I'm trying to pull or a chair that I'm trying to pull, it's easy for me to pull the chair right from the front. If it's in front of me, I can pull it like this. Imagine if I were at an angle of 60 degrees. So if this is 120 degrees from the center is the chair, boron is the, the electrons of boron is the chair. Then this fluorine is at 60 degrees and this is also at 60 degrees. So if I'm trying to pull the chair from a side, in the same direction or even if I pull it I'm pulling it in this direction and there's another me standing there at 120 degrees pulling the chair too both of us will have to use that force and the chair would come the same direction or if I try to say if I try to pull it from a side I would have to use more energy or the effectiveness of my pull will be lesser and we notice that when you have this angle of 60 degrees on both sides that is 120 degrees the, the effectiveness of this pull becomes half and the effectiveness of this pull also becomes half so what happens half of we have one pull on this side one total this fluorine is pulling is pulling from front 
So there is one pull on this side and there are two half pulls on the net direction is this direction because this goes here, this goes here. You can imagine the net direction to be this. So these two, the effect of these two would be half, which means the sum of these two, half of the, the sum of these two would be one. So what happens as a result of this, you have a dipole moment on one direction and a net dipole moment, which is equal to this in the opposite direction. So resulting in a net dipole moment of zero. Isn't this interesting? Just because of the structure, although it had, uh, it should have, the molecule should have had shown polarity. It shows zero dipole moment or no polarity. It's a non-polar molecule. The next two examples are also very, very interesting. Here we notice that both the molecules have a similar structure, right? In the diagram, I just explain, you know, in the next topic, that is the Vesper model, we are going to discuss the structures of molecules. But right now, just to understand this also, I'll just show you, just as I showed you the structure, I'll show you the other structures also. That makes it easier for you to understand it. Although we'll be doing the structures in details later. Now you have NF3 and you have NH3. Both seem to have the similar uh, structure, but we notice that the dipole moment, net dipole moment of NF3 is only 0.23 Dubai, while the net dipole moment of ammonia is 1.47 Dubai. It's a large dipole moment. And when we use our logic, Fluorine is the most electronegative element and nitrogen is electronegative and both of them have nitrogen So it's not nitrogen which is affecting the dipole moment. It is the other element and hydrogen is uh, Actually the most electropositive non-metal It's the most or the least electronegative non-metal is hydrogen and this is the most electronegative non-metal so how does this affect the, and why do we find, we would expect this molecule to have much more dipole moment due to the electronegativity difference of fluorine and nitrogen, and we would expect NH to have less dipole moment. But what do we notice? We see, and if we draw the structure, let me show what this molecule is like. I just told you this, that BF3 is like a molecule which has three bonds, like this okay yeah it has three bonds in a triangular shape yeah this is what i made the structure the three bonds are in a triangular phrase yeah right now what happens in the case of nf3 these three bonds are there but nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons so this lone pair of electrons, what does it do? It aligns itself like this on top. The triangle is there and it aligns itself in this direction. And as soon as this aligns itself in this direction, the, night, the lone pair, these bond pairs, the triangle, these angles are pushed down slightly. So what do we see? Now we see this shape to be like that of a pyramid. It pushes down just ever slightly, very slightly. And we see now the shape of the molecule looks like a pyramid. If you join these planes, you would imagine that this is a triangle in the base and all the, uh, this is one face of the pyramid, one face of the pyramid and the third face and the triangle in the bottom is the fourth face of the pyramid. So it makes a pyramidal shape. A trigonal pyramid so in this trigonal pyramidal shape now what happens there is one bond on top and three of these which will have an effect of their own and what do we notice since fluorine is more electronegative the dipole moment is going towards fluorine the individual bond dipoles are pointing towards fluorine but the lone pair always has the dipole moment towards itself so what are we noticing in this structure that all the dipole moments, their energies or the pull is being scattered in different directions. The dipole moment is being scattered in four different directions. And um, 
On the other hand, in ammonia, what do we notice that all the three hydrogens are more electropositive than nitrogen. Therefore, all of the three hydrogens are pushing electrons towards nitrogen and the lone pair is also pulling electrons upwards. So on the whole, the movement of the direction, they are all combining their efforts. All the dipoles are pointing in one direction. So they are reinforcing each other. But here all the dipoles are scattered. They are moving away from each other. They are fighting with each other. I pull it this way. I pull it this way. No, I'm going to pull it this way. No, no, no. The lone pair pulls it upwards. So they are, the energy here is being scattered while in ammonia all the force, all the movement of electrons is in one direction. So they are like going together, although it's weak individually, it's a weak push. Yet the, uh, the difference may not be as much as the difference of nitrogen and fluorine, like electronegativity difference of hydrogen and nitrogen may not be as much as it is here. Yet they are all doing it together, going together in one direction, reinforcing each other. And that's the reason why this molecule ammonia has such a high dipole moment. Interesting? Let us now move to the next type of molecules that is the AB4 type or we could say AB3C type because I've taken one example here which has three atoms of three elements. We take four examples methane, chloroform and carbon tetrachloride. I'm still holding the pencils because I want to explain the structure to you. In the case of methane, carbon uh, chloroform and carbon tetrafluoride, these molecules have a tetrahedral structure. Now what is a tetrahedral structure? A tetrahedral structure is a symmetrical structure. And here I showed you the, the trigonal pyramidal shape, but there was no bond here. And in this case, the bond is a solid proper bond. That is, there is a shared pair of electrons here also. So now the molecule is somewhat like this, but these are bent in such a way that each angle here, all the bonds with every bond with the other three bonds has an angle of 109 degrees and five minutes or 109.5 uh, degrees. Each angle is the same. And since each angle is the same, just as we had 120 degrees in each angle, this was a symmetrical structure. In the same manner, this is a symmetrical structure. Each angle ha is 109.5 degrees. So if you move this structure in any direction, you get the same structure in all directions. So whichever, whichever atom you take as the bond you take on the top, the other three would be aligned with the same angles around it. So this kind of a structure, how does it, how do you see the dipole moment? In this again, you have to keep in mind that whatever be the directions of these bonds, you have four bonds and you can divide this molecule mentally into a half, that is two halves. How do we do it? When we do it, let us keep this here in front and let us start dividing it into halves. I can imagine if I draw a line here, I have a, yeah. If I draw a line here in the middle, I'm dividing this molecule into two parts. The right hand side, which has two bonds, and the left hand side, which has two bonds too. Now, do you see this? Now all these bonds, one of these bonds is, now the tetrahedral structure has been plotted in this uh, while I was trying to do this. Yeah. Now, if I make a line like this, I divide these molecules. Now this molecule is pointing forwards and this one, if I keep it like this, is pointing backwards. This is pointing forwards and this is pointing backwards. So if you divide this into two, then whatever is the effect of these two, if it's equal and opposite to the effect of these two, you are creating a somewhat uh, similar kind of molecule to that of the AB2 linear uh, type of molecule, right? Like carbon dioxide, carbon in the center, oxygen on one side, oxygen on the other side, both are canceling out each other and the net dipole moment is zero. 
So, in your imagination, as I showed you here, that two of these are contributing in one direction and one of these bonds is contributing in another direction. Remember, it is not that the structure is always like this. You could have imagined this to be the uh, fluorine in one direction. Then the net effect of these two would have been uh, equal and opposite. And if we imagine this, then the net result, net effect of these two would be equal and opposite to this. So, since it's a symmetrical molecule. The same way, here, if you imagine, divide the molecule into two halves, two of the bonds and the two other bonds, if they are equal and they are pointing in the opposite directions or even, that is if they are going outwards or they are coming inwards, it practically acts as a, as a triatomic or AB2 type of linear molecule. So, what would the net dipole moment be in that case? It would be zero. See here, in the case of hydrogen, hydrogen is less electronegative than carbon. Therefore, all the dipole moments are, uh, the bond dipoles are pointing towards carbon. But if you divide this into half, these two halves are in this direction and these two halves in that direction. Ultimately, what is the effect? They are cancelling out each other. And in carbon tetrachloride, the opposite is the case that all the four chlorines they are they are more electronegative and the bond dipoles are moving towards the chlorines but if you take two chlorines on one side and two chlorines on the other side their net effect is that they are pulling towards opposite directions again cancelling out the effect of each other and hence the net dipole moment in this molecule also is zero but in the case of carbon as chloroform Chloroform has three chlorines and one hydrogen. Now, all this, although the structure is symmetrical, the effect of the atoms is not the same. Hydrogen is moving, is uh, pushing in one direction, but the three chlorines are pulling in the other direction. So, what is the net effect here? This is somewhat like this, you know, like ammonia, that it has a reinforcing effect, that all the dipoles are moving in one direction. Here we find hydrogen is coming towards carbon and all the chlorines are pulling it apart. So it does have a net dipole moment. Or even if you divided this molecule into two as we did for the other two, you would find that one has a dipole moment of a certain amount. The other side does not. The dipoles on the two sides are not equal. And since they are not equal, they would have unequal effect and a resultant dipole would exist. And hence, this molecule is polar while these two are non-polar. So this was about the ionic character of covalent bonds. In the next video, I'm going to tell you about the covalent character of ionic bonds. Please wait for that video. And if this one helped you, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends. And please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you. And bye-bye.